Hi and welcome to this edition of American RVer. I'm Jim Gritch and today what we're going to do is this is part two, part two of our uh, Motosat to RF Mogul Exchange. A uh, couple of uh, webisodes before, uh, I think it was two months ago, we basically took the controller from Motosat and we went to a controller for RF Mogul. Uh, because the Motosat controller had failed. So today what we're going to do is we're going to replace the actual Motosat dish up on the roof. So uh, we're going to go through the whole process for you and the first thing we're going to do is look at some of the parts that we've got of course for that uh, mount and for the dish for RF Mogul. So uh, of course you see all these parts in front of me. One of the things that we're going to uh, look at is we've got of course the dish itself that is the Eagle dish for RF Mogul. And that's a pressed dish. And that dish goes on to this mount. This mount is powered, of course. It's got motors in it. It's got sensors in it. Uh, on the mount, we're going to put these mounting brackets. These brackets actually hold the dish onto the mount. And we're going to show you how that all works. And then we've got a LNB. Actually, there's three LNBs here. These are for Dish Network. Now, uh, if you have DirecTV, it's going to be a little bit different, but Dish Network has three LNBs. And then, of course, we've got a cable, which is a control cable that's going to be run from the roof down into the coach itself. We've got the uh, skid plates, if you will, that go around the LNB. So when it actually is down in its stowed position, the uh, mount will hit this onto the roof and it'll actually hit onto this plate. And this is the skid plate that you get with this whole system. And these will hit the skid plate, it protects the LNBs, and then everything kind of rests flat so that you can travel. Um, the other thing we get with this, of course, is the arm, which is the extension for the, uh, the dish to hold it out. And uh, we put the LNBs on the end. The dish uh, is, this is mounted to the dish on this side, and so that allows the reflection of the satellites and the signals to come into the LNBs. And of course, we've got our little um, LED lights on here that uh, will light up the dish in the evening. So that's kind of a cool little feature. The other thing we've got is we've got a, a cup, and it's what I call a scupper. It's actually, it, goes over the top of the wires as they go into your coach's roof and inside the coach and that protects it from weather from rain etc getting in there and we've also got another uh, this is where all the, the junction box basically where all the wires come through and they're hooked up inside this also to protect it from the weather so we've got all those things we, it also comes with a new connector which is the green uh, it's a 12 pin connector and this we've already actually wired in two shows ago for the, uh, the Motosat dish, but uh, now we're going to have to rewire it to this harness so that uh, it will work with the RF mogul dish. Okay, so that's kind of a quick rundown of everything here. Of course, we've got some screws, nuts and bolts, things like that. So um, first thing we're going to do is we're going to have to raise this dish. Uh, actually the mount. We're going to have to raise it so we can actually mount the dish to it. And we're doing this obviously on the ground instead of doing it up on the top of the coach because it's a little easier to put all this together. Uh, and then of course we're going to have to heft it up onto the roof. And uh, of course we're going to have to also take the Motosat dish and get it off the roof. So that's kind of the process we're going to be going through here. So the first thing that we need to do in order to mount the uh, the dish and some of the other things here is we've got to bring this mount up so that we can actually get the dish onto it and we can mount these uh, mounting uh, units. So what we're going to do is we're going to just plug in the plug into the base of the mount and then we're going to use, this is actually one of the batteries we use for our video camera and so it, since it happens to be uh, 7.2 7 volts this is a 12 volt system, so you can probably use anything from about 6 volts all the way up to maybe 16 volts or so um, to power this. So what we're going to do is we're just going to put the uh, red and the orange wires in. And if I put them in the correct direction, if it doesn't go up, you have to switch them because it is, uh, of course, uh, polarity sensitive. 
And so this is, like I say, about 7.2 volts. So it's gonna go up a little bit slower than a 12 volt uh, battery would. If you have a power drill, you can take the battery off the power drill. As long as it's not more than maybe 18 volts would work, I would try to keep it around 12 to 14 volts. And we wanna bring this up so it's not quite uh, 90 degrees. It's back just a little bit from 90 degrees. And that looks about right, right there, so that we can get the, uh, uh, the brackets and everything mounted to it. Now, in order to mount the brackets, we've got to take out some of the Allen screws that are here. They, they mount to these brackets uh, that's already on this mount. So, in order to do that, we've got to figure out which screw is the correct one for this, which Allen wrench is the correct one. And looks like this is probably it right here. And so what we're gonna do is gonna loosen up all of these screws, take them right out actually, and then the mounting brackets will actually mount in place right on this particular panel. This panel is not flat, so you have to have something that is offset to hold the dish, and so that's why they, they made this. I now uh, am putting the screws back in with the Allen wrench to hold this first bracket. Now there's of course two brackets, one for either side. And what they're gonna do is affix to this mount. And then we're going to uh, lock them into the dish itself. And these, this mount will also not only hold the dish, but also hold the arm that extends out from the dish. Now we've got the arm that's going to be going on the dish, mounted to the dish from this point. And then we are going to put the L and B on it on the opposite end. And so there are screws in here we've got to remove that is gonna actually hold the L and B on, or the multiple L and Bs, I probably should say. Because with uh, Dish Network, there are three satellites it picks up. It's 110, 119, and 129. And so, in order to pick them up, you have to have three L and Bs. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to loosen up the screws on this mount a little bit so that I can slip this unit in there. And I'm going to line it up, and it slips right in. Tolerances are very close on all of these. And they have to be, of course, because, you know, you're looking at some finite... Um, within inches or less than inches of uh, tolerance to get the satellite to work properly. Next thing we're going to do is we are going to mount these protective units that actually rub against the uh, plate, the metal plate, when the dish is being lowered. So you have to have something that keeps the LMBs from getting damaged. So we've got a couple of screws. We're gonna just slide those in from the, the front. Put in a couple of these screws. And I'm gonna use a regular screwdriver for this one because it doesn't seem to be cooperating well with my power screwdriver. And you don't wanna over tighten it either because it is going into a piece of plastic. And then slip the other one in. And of course the holes, when you slip them in, the holes line up for the screws. And then you have the arms, the arm is ready with the L and B is attached, and that's what it looks like when it's all together. Now, you see that these little wires, these wires will be connected to the wearing harness later on. These wires are for the LED lights that are here that shine on the dish to make it look really cool at night. <laughs> all right, now it's time to mount the uh, dish, and uh, what we're gonna do is pick this dish up, and we've got this wiring harness that has to go through because it has to get up to the L and B's. So we're going to slide those through the hole. And 
and slide it all the way up till we get the dish onto the mount. And then we're going to put a screw in, two screws on the top so that we could hold the dish up here while we mount the arm to the dish. So we've got the dish mounted, at least temporarily. And now we've got to mount the arm. And the arm goes at the bottom. And make sure the orientation is correct with the LNBs facing up. And we got number one going for two. This one's a little more difficult for me because I can't quite see over there. Okay, and then what happens is, as you can see, this dish just extends out. I'm sorry, the arm extends out off of the dish. And there you go. That's the entire mount. And of course now, the next step is to hook up the wires uh, to the LNBs. There are three wires and there are uh, four units coming off the LNB, four of the uh, um, RF fittings, the F connectors. And so we're gonna hook that up and uh, get that prepped so that the signal obviously will come from the LNB and go down into your system. There are only three wires on this particular mount. The three wires uh, go the left and the two center. Do not put any of the wires on the right, looking at it from inside this way. The, the right is actually an input to the LNBs, so you do not want to use that one. You want to use all the outputs because this is where the signal is coming from, from the satellite, so that those are outputs that you need. So I've got those all hooked in, and what I have done too is I've used this um, electrical tune-up grease, and this grease is uh, good because it'll keep the connections watertight and also gives you a better connection. So that's a good thing to use on any coax connection. So the last thing we've got to do up here as far as wiring goes is we've got to get these LNB, uh, I'm sorry, the LED lights wired in. And so we're going to make sure we've got enough wire so that I can tie wrap this to the arm. And we're going to find the two little wires that are here coming out of the harness, which you could probably see right there. Uh, two small wires coming out and they're the same color. So what you basically do is just strip them back and you attach the uh, same color to the same color. And as I said, that RF Mobile gives you the 3M connectors that you can use to do just that. And these are small connectors like that. You just slip the wires in and you just crimp it down. And that is uh, the connection point that you activate your LEDs from. As you can see, I taped up a couple of spots on the harness, um, one where the connectors went, and then one at the very end so that the harness doesn't pull apart and the wires fall out. So now what I'm gonna do is there are some extra holes on the side of this uh, arm, so I'm just going to actually utilize those holes, and I'm going to put a tie wrap in here. Now they actually, uh, RF Mogul actually provides you with white tie wraps, and you can either use them on the roof to do the uh, wiring up there and then tie wrap it, or you can use them here to hook up the wires. Uh, but I prefer black because it's a black mount, and so I had some black tie wraps. So I decided to use my own, and so I could secure it to the edge of the dish here. Now, the mount is all ready. I'm going to actually move this mount back a little bit. It's not light, let me tell you. It's gonna be a little bit of a chore to get it up on the roof, but I think we can manage. And what we're gonna do is, I actually am gonna have a friend of mine, Ron, come over, and he's gonna help me hoist this up on the roof, and he's also gonna help me get the Motosat dish uh, disconnected and down off the roof. So it really would help to have an extra person to do that. And 
of course, we're gonna now have to go up and mount this once we get the Motosat dish off the roof. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you what it looks like when it comes down, and we're gonna utilize that same battery and the, the red and orange wire. If I put it in the correct configuration, we'll see if it goes up or down. There we go. So this is what it's gonna look like on your roof when you're powering it up with the uh, Eagle controller. And actually, you're gonna have a skid plate where this hits. So it's gonna hit and then it's going to actually close down on itself. And hopefully we won't, won't run out of table there when it's doing that. And then it will automatically stop because it hits the, uh, the end of its throw. And you can see that the ends here, the, uh, the protectors for the LMB, hit the dish as well as hit the ground or on, it will be the roof once we get it up there and this is what it looks like when it's stowed so everything seems to be functioning correctly we're going to now uh, go up there and uh, work on getting that uh, motosat dish loose and this basically what we're doing here is for someone that has a motosat system that wants to change it out to a rf mogul system obviously if you don't have any system up there or if you have a dome it's going to be a little bit different uh, situation as far as putting the dish together same thing but as far as up on the roof, it will be different, of course, depending on what you've got. But the whole premise of this was to replace Motosat with RF Mobile. So stay with us, because that's what we're going to do right after this commercial break. We're now up on the roof, as you probably can tell. And uh, this is the old Motosat dish that we're going to be taking apart and replacing the, with the RF Mogul dish. And just want to mention that uh, in the break, I basically scraped off the sealant that was here and took the uh, scupper uh, that was over the wires, got that out of there, and now there's clear access to the interior of the coach through the hole that's here so that we will be able to run the new uh, wire that's the uh, controller cable for the uh, Motosat controller, I'm sorry, for the Eagle controller down below. So first thing we're gonna do is take off the cover on the junction box and that way we can get to the wires because all of these wires have to be removed and put in to the RF mobile and that is a different configuration than we have here so this junction box will not stay here on the roof we have a different junction box that comes with the RF mobile and so it's just a twist lock type control cable. And the other ones, we're gonna use a wrench and we're gonna take all of the different connectors for the coax apart and get this ready to move, get this dish ready to be lifted off the roof. Well, this is the old control cable for the Motosat. And we actually have to attach this cable to the new cable and feed it down inside the coach. So in order to do that, because it's got the big connector on the end, won't go down through. So we're gonna have to take and cut it. And now we'll be able to attach the new cable to this and run it down through. All right, now that we've got the wire run, which was, believe me, a little bit of a challenge. <laughs> so now what we have to do is disassemble the dish and get it off the roof so we can put the RF mogul dish in its place. So Ron and I are gonna start taking up all the screws here all the way around the shroud at the base of this dish. All right, now that we got the shrouds off, that exposes the screws that are going down to holding the Motosat dish to the platform. So we're gonna break those loose and then we should be able to lift the dish right off. So as you can see, we've got the RF mogul dish up on the roof. We got the Motosat dish down on the ground. And so now we have actually used the same base plate uh, for the uh, RF mogul dish that the uh, Motosat uh, uh, unit used. So what we're gonna do, we have to make sure we center it so that when it goes down, it goes down in the trough that's there. Um, and there's plenty of space to do that. And so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna use some self-tapping screws 
and we're going to put those self-tapping screws in each of the four corners. One thing I, I will mention is that this RF Mogo dish does come with um, feet, extension feet that come out. I have actually taken those off because that's what was recommended to me by RF Mogul. Take the feet off and use the base plate by itself and drill it down into the uh, old Motosat um, base plate. So that's what we're going to do. So I have an alternate method for you if you don't want to use self-tapping screws. And this is the method actually that I chose to use on this dish. Um, the front two uh, mount points are actually bolted down because you can actually reach in with a nut and a washer and bolt it down. The back two you can't because it's in the channel. So what I've decided to do is basically I'm going to drill it out and then I'm going to tap it. So first we're going to do a drill the size of the screws that I'm using, which are, I don't know, it looks like they're, uh, oh, maybe uh, 1024 screws, something like that. And I'm going to actually just drill down in the hole and try to keep it as centered as possible when I drill it. And Then I'm going to tap it after I drill it. And you got to be careful when you drill too, because you don't want to drill through the roof, of course. And so carefully drill it. And when you hit the end, stop, and you'll have to tap it at this point. Well, next thing we're going to do is we're going to get the, all the wires into the junction box, which I've already done. The junction box is actually loose. And if you'll notice, I've routed the, uh, the harness from the Eagle, the RF Mogul Eagle dish, around forward and then over. That seemed to be the best way to do it here. You can bring it out the back if you want. I just didn't want it near the arm when the arm came down. So I brought it from the front towards the front of the coach and around to the side and then made it up my previous cables to that and then put in the new cable that is the control cable. So what we're going to do is we're going to drill, bring it out a little bit from the mount so that it doesn't get, interfere with the mount. I'm going to drill a couple of holes in here this, as starter holes into the roof. And then we're going to put some, some uh, galvanized screws in there. First, remember, always caulk before you put the screws in so that you'll have some caulk in there and you have a nice seal on your roof. All right, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to put the cover on. And I made sure that I took the screws that come with this and I actually drilled out the holes a little bit so the screws will go in better. So, and these screws are just, they do not go through the roof. They just go into the cap itself, just to hold the cap down. And it kind of helps seal everything in there. And from what I'm told, you do not have to caulk on both sides of this. In other words, you don't have to caulk the wires in there. Um, what I did do with the coax cables is I did put some more dielectric in there so that um, they would be good connections and sealed. And so there you have it. Now the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take and just tie wrap these wires together right here where they go into the bundle just to make it a little bit neater and keep them tighter together so they don't bounce around as you're going down the road. And I'm going to snip that off and we should be done pretty much up on the roof except for one other thing. We've got the other scupper to put back where all the wires are going into the roof. You don't want to forget that because if you forget that, you're going to have a little bit of problem with water down below. So that is the dish and mount installation here on the roof. We are now done. We're going to go back down and we're going to hook up the wiring that we've got. 
uh, with the new uh, control cable that we'd run down there. And uh, then we're going to put it into test dish mode and see if we get a signal. So uh, let's go down into the couch. So that concludes the RF Mogul uh, Motosat switchover for the dish portion of it. As I said, if you need to know more about the controller, uh, you can go back a couple of webisodes on American RVer. I believe it's a 104. will tell you all about putting in a new controller if that's all you want to do. But the system works flawlessly. Everything is great. And uh, we've got TV again. And this is a dish network system. So the um, picture looks wonderful. So I uh, hope you enjoyed this. If you have any questions, you can contact RF Mobile at the number on your screen. And you can also contact them via their website. So thanks again for watching here on American RVer. We'll see you next time. Take care.